Hello Saturday morning and it is 10 o'clock and I'm over here <clears throat> steaming cabbage there and I've got two other cabbages I got these at the orchard Thursday and I've got 13 and a half pounds of ground beef here that I'm getting ready to put in um, my eggs and all my seasonings and that includes Worcestershire sauce and I need to get my minute rice out and you know all my seasonings and get all of this mixed together really good because I am putting together cabbage rolls and I'm gonna make some cabbage rolls for dinner today and then I'm gonna make some uh, that I'm going to put them in the freezer so that we have them for dinners I just pulled them out of the freezer this winter and um, it looked like it was going to rain. They're still calling for rain, but it's getting a little bit sunny, then cloudy, sunny, cloudy. So if it holds out where it will stay like this, I'm going to go back out to the apple orchard because my daughter-in-law is due today. And she's been having some contractions, just not consistent. And I thought going out there on that wavy road out there in the country, because it's almost like being on a roller coaster, that I thought maybe that might stir things up a little bit. So I want to get all of this together, go get my makeup on, and go out um, to the orchard, though I don't need anything. I'll probably buy them some stuff. And I have a Lucy that wants to go outside. So, are we having cabbage rolls today, Lou? She was already sniffing the meat. Okay, so here's what I do with this. Um, I let it steam for a little bit, and we're getting to the very bottom here where the leaves are gonna start getting too small. We're not gonna be able to use them, but that's okay, because I use my cabbage up anyway. I usually um, chop my cabbage up, and I put it in with my um, cabbage rolls or I cut it up and I s put in the fridge and then you know with a different meal later you know in the week I will um, <clears throat> you know make like fried cabbage or some kind of recipe that I got to use cabbage so when they're really soft like this where you know that they're going to bend that's when you want to pull them out and I just have a plate here with my colander so let any liquid run out there and um, this way they cool down this here when it looks really white like this they're not ready um, to pull this out because this and see it's still stuck on here a little bit when they're a little bit tight on there they're not ready sometimes the very top part can be you know real soft like this here but when it gets down here it's still too hard and um, it's not soft enough where you'll be able to roll so that's when I put my cover back on my pot there and um, this is getting kind of full. So I have my 13 and a half pounds of meat for each um, packet of meat. This was four, four, was four and a half, I think they're four and a half pounds of ground beef each packet. Um, I have one cup of minute rice per package of meat, so three cups of rice. I did two eggs per package of meat, so there's six eggs in there. And then I'm gonna add some Worcestershire sauce, my salt, my pepper. Um, with this, instead of measuring out in like teaspoons, tablespoons, however you know you would do it, I'm just gonna put in about maybe a quarter of a cup of that. And then you can put in onions if you like, but because you know my family, my boys don't like onions, but they don't mind onion powder. So I put that in, and I'll probably put in, for every pound of meat, what is it, a teaspoon? Or every two pounds of meat is a teaspoon. I think every pound of meat is like half of a teaspoon. So obviously I'm going to need um, one, two, six, probably about six teaspoons of that. And then I'm just going to generously sprinkle in some basil. And then I always try to put in some beef bouillon. There's not enough here. For um, every like two pound packet of meat that I would use, like if I'm making even meatballs or whatever, I always put in bouillon and a little bit of water to make my meat very moist. So um, I'm going to need two, I'm going to need six, six teaspoons of this. And I'm going to add water to it 
and usually um, for four and a half pounds I'll probably do half of a cup so I've got three of those so that'll be one and a half cups of water and that water I even do this when I make meatballs for like spaghetti and meatballs when I'm making meatloaf anything I always put in a little bit of beef broth and I use the powdered stuff and I always put water because if you do that it makes them very moist and you know like your meatballs aren't real hard like golf balls you know what I'm saying or like your meatball a meatloaf like sometimes when you cut your meatloaf and it just seems it's just too stiff you know that's the only way I could describe it um, this way if you put the water in it it brings moisture into your meat so that's what I do and I'm gonna get ready and start rolling everything Okay, so here's um, from the first head of cabbage, what I've got rolled, I'm getting to do another one. I still have a few more leaves here, and this is really small, but I save them when they're small um, after I get all of these taken care of and see how much meat. I mean, once I've used all my meat, or let's say the leaves that I steam after I've used all those, and if I have a little bit more meat left over, I can always come back and make smaller um, cabbage rolls. Obviously, they won't be, you know, as big, but that's okay. Um, and I probably should check this. And I thought that I would show you guys how I roll out my cabbage rolls in case if you've never done this before. And I have had people, when I've shown these in my vlogs in the past, you know, on a day that I'm making cabbage rolls, and I have had people ask me, uh, is this soft enough? That one's soft enough, but the next one probably won't be. No. So, I will just show you how I do it. So, I spread my leaf out here. Um, if your membrane here of um, your cabbage is real thick, sometimes they are, I just get a little knife and I just shave like the top part of it off so that, you know, it lays flat and it will roll. And I just grab my meat here. So I get a good amount of meat. I'm going to make sure whatever I'm putting in here is going to be enough to fit inside of here. So I just go ahead and just flatten it out a little bit, make it like a little log. And then the key is we roll it. And after you roll it, you take your sides, you tuck in one side, you tuck in the other side and then you just continue to roll it and then this way you've closed both ends of your cabbage and leave the seam side down that's how you roll a cabbage roll it's pretty basically when you're rolling just think envelope style and cooking they say envelope style meaning that you close in a side you close in the other side you know same thing and then like with this that you're rolling it to the end so anyway it's that simple. Okay, three large heads of cabbage. This is what it gets. It, I'm having cabbage rolls for dinner today, so there's four of my family left here at home. Two kids have already moved out, but so eight cabbage rolls, and these are good size. So two cabbage rolls a person, this is enough for one dinner. Um, so I did the same. I held out eight. So we've got today's dinner and then one, two, three, four dinners to put in the freezer for another time. But so that's one, two, three, four, five. And then this is actually six. I got six cabbage rolls here. Um, Adam and I are going to be going to Ohio to go visit my mom here soon. So it's just going to be Harry and Adam. And I try to put things in the freezer um, for them so that they could just pull things out and <clears throat> either reheat it if it's already cooked or like something like this Harry could just you know grab that pan and I'll probably just buy like a jar of Prego or something so he can just open it up throw it over the cabbage rolls here that he'll take out of the freezer and then he can make some rice or something with it um, Another thing <clears throat> that I have um, shared before, when you're making like soup and you're making chili, you make lasagna, it doesn't matter what you make. And say you got quite a bit left over, maybe your kids were in and out and nobody was really home for dinner and you put them in the refrigerator, going to use them for leftovers later in the week. 
you could do that. Or another thing that you can do so that you always have meals on hand, and this is what I do, instead of thinking, oh, we'll just use this as leftovers later in the week, I let everything cool down for a couple hours. And like before I'll go to bed, I'll get freezer Ziploc bags and I'll put everything in there. And I've shared this before, but just in case anybody's missed this, when you are freezing like chilies and soups in um, Ziploc bags, the thing that you need to do um, after I seal it and you want to squeeze as much air out as possible and finish closing it up, I get either that white clear mailing tape or you can use duct tape. And I just pull off a strip long enough, you know, that goes across the top and I put half on the top part of it and then the other half I fold it over and close it really good. That way you don't have to worry about any kind of spillage or anything like that. And then when you take it out of the freezer and it thaws out, you just get your scissors and just, you know, cut across the top and dump it in your pan. But I I do this with all kinds of things. I do I you can freeze macaroni and cheese, you can freeze um, scalloped potatoes, and that's probably what I'm going to be doing um, over the next uh, week or so here, as um, we're eating and making dinner. I'll probably even make a little bit more than my normal, but instead of putting it in the fridge and saying, oh, we'll just have leftovers another day this week. Now, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll put them in freezer bags and put it in the freezer. Then that way, like I said, when I'm gone, all Harry has to do is take it out and heat it up for, you know, he and Brian to eat. But I like doing that anyway, because you never know if you're going to come down with getting sick. You know, you don't know if you're going to get a day that just gets so busy that, um, you know, by the time that it's time to cook dinner, it's like, oh, I don't even want to cook dinner. I don't even know what to cook dinner. Let's just go out and get a pizza or grab some burgers or something. Instead of doing that, see, if you have things in the freezer, you can just go to your freezer, pull it out, defrost it, whatever, put it in your pan or in your oven, depending on whatever it is that you have, and heat it up. You can even heat it up in your microwave. So that's what I like doing with my leftovers because and a lot of times we save things and it's like, oh, we'll eat these for leftovers. And how many times have you not eaten them and you end up throwing leftovers out and that's wasting. So that's why I like to put things in the freezer and then you just have it. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's what I'm going to do with this here. That will be one meal that uh, Harry will make for he and Brian. And then, like I said, I do have other things out there. I have chili, I have chicken soup, I have stew, beef stew that I've made. Um, I don't know if I have, I think I might have some chicken and dumplings that I put out there too. I had some extra chicken and dumplings and I froze that. So I'll probably make like scalloped potatoes here pretty soon and, you know, different things like that. And I'll save some aside, put it in the freezer. And then that way um, he's covered. And like I say, it's always good to have that in your freezer anyway. If you have like a big freezer, I'm not talking about your freezer in, in you know, your refrigerator. I'm talking if you have like a deep freezer. It's nice to have those because like I say, you never, you never know. We're coming upon winter and the weather changing for fall and all that and people start getting sick. You know what I mean? So, you know, and when we get sick, we just don't want to cook, right? So this way, you're covered if you do that. I have those meals in a jar, too. Um, I've shown how I've done some of those, but instead of searching for my videos, go to Linda's Pantry, just type in meals in the jar. Linda shows you how to do all that, because that's where I learned how to do it. It was from Miss Linda. And um, so I'll show you here how I finish up um, my cabbage rolls. I mean, these I'm going to put in the freezer, but I'll show you how I get this ready for dinner. And even though... It's 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to put this in the oven at um, 250 because we'll eat about 4 o'clock today. And I find when you slow cook your cabbage rolls, they are really, really good. For some reason, slow cooking anything, just it, it does make a difference in the flavor of the food. And I even do that sometimes with my cabbage rolls when I take them out early in the morning from the freezer. I'll let them sit out till about 11 o'clock or so. Just let them, you know, slow cook at 250. So at 250, about 4 o'clock, yeah, they'll be done. So anyhow, um, I will show you what I do to get this in the oven. Okay, I just use um, crushed tomatoes. This is a 28-ounce 
um, can, so your big can of crushed tomatoes. And if you don't have crushed tomatoes, you can use tomato puree. Or if you have the, what is it, the 8-ounce tomato paste, you can put that in, you know, mix water with it to get it to a consistency like that. Anything like that. Now, you can put things in here to, to make a barbecue sauce. And to make barbecue sauce, you really just need some Worcestershire sauce, some brown sugar, um, a little bit of mustard, and that kind of thing. But um, I just go ahead and grab my Sweet Baby Ray's right here. And let me get this lid off. I'll show you what I do. I just give it a couple good squeezes. And get that all the way down there. So that's what, maybe a half of a cup. And then squeeze it again, a good squeeze, about another half of a cup. So about a cup of sweet baby rays. Then I just put in a little bit of salt. That's kosher salt. Instead of using my pepper mill, I'm one-handed here, I'm just going to sprinkle in some pepper, like that, and give this a good little whisk around. And I like doing, like with the green peppers, like I showed you in one of my previous videos here recently, where I made my stuffed peppers, and I put in extra peppers, and I put in um, tomatoes. And I was thinking about putting some tomatoes in, because I got tomatoes over at the farm stand. And I was thinking about doing that, and my husband, when he has cabbage rolls, he loves to have this sauce. So, uh, before I dump this on top, I have my plates over here with my extra cabbages. I'm going to use this one here, and I'm just going to get a knife, and I'm just going to chunk it up and sprinkle it all over. Okay, so I have my, you know, chunks of cabbage that I just cut up and chunked up there, and I decided to go ahead and throw some tomatoes on there anyway. My husband will still get a sauce, but what we need to do is get our salt because um, the salt over the tomatoes, it's not really for the flavor because the sauce is going to go on top of that, but um, the sauce, salt on here is going to start releasing the juices of the tomatoes and help them break down a little bit. So I do that, then just going to pour this all over like that and this will all you know as it starts heating through it's all gonna break down get down there on the sides it all start getting all bubbly and everything and when you smell this cooking oh wait until about a couple hours when this really starts to cook and the more that they get close to being done these will make your house smell so delightful. Even if you have a second story home like I do, you'll smell them all the way up the stairs. It will smell very glorious in your house. So anyway, I'm going to get that in the oven, and I'm going to get my freezer bags and get all of these other meals out to my freezer. And I think I'll probably do this one more time. I usually do it two times. I usually try to, the next time I go, I'll, I'll try to get three cabbages. Sometimes I get two, but I'm going to try to get three this time. Um, I've already got some peppers, like I said, out in the freezer. And then if I can get these out in the freezer too, if I've got one, two, three, four meals, I don't count that other one um, because Harry and Brian will eat that. But if I do four and then the next time I make them, I probably won't, you know, make them for dinner like I'm doing tonight. I'll probably just, if I can get, you know, five or six more meals, I'll put all of those out there. So if I can get, let's just say six more meals, the next time and I have one two three four so I have ten I have ten different dinners that will you know we'll eat those all through the winter so anyway it's always good to make foods ahead if you can and get them in the freezer you know because like I say you you never know and then while you can get your produce cheap right now like cabbage those cabbages that I bought and the, the one head was huge um, I got those for a dollar fifty each. It was unbelievable. All the cabbages there were really big. As a matter of fact, when I go there tomorrow, they should probably still have some cabbage there. I'll try to remember to take my camera tomorrow. I forgot to take it um, when I went Thursday, but I'll take it tomorrow and um, I'll show you guys um, the cabbages there. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to get any tomorrow. I'll wait probably till like the next time I go. In a couple more weeks, I'm going to go again. 
um, cause I'm going to get some apples to take over to my mom's. So they'll have more cabbages and all that. I'll probably take some cabbage to her too. But, um, that's probably when I'll get more cabbage and they'll be okay sitting in the fridge, you know, for a little while till I get back. And then I'll do that again. And hopefully, like I said, I can get another, you know, five to six more meals. So get your freezers stocked up if you can. And um, I will see you in the next video. Bye. Just showing you quickly, I took my um, cabbage rolls out. They've been sitting since about 3.30. It's 3.49. Right now we're going to eat in about 10 minutes. I'm just making pierogies to go with this. But look at that. And I'm going to spoon. So this is all the just chunked up um, cabbage that I put in there. Woo! And the tomatoes. I have to hold my camera up here, but you can see there's a lot of um, of the juice. My husband likes that, but the cabbage rolls are there at the bottom. So we'll be eating here in about 10-15 minutes or so. Again, there's another cabbage roll there at the bottom. So that's what that looks like.